Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks. I'm ah. along with whew, Baby Bo. Not on the camera! <laughs> just about the camera. Okay, I'm talking about the biggest mistakes <laughs> made with baby birds. Oh my gosh, filming with them. That could definitely be one. How about it? Holy lordy. And I'm actually just gonna go over the number one biggest mistake that I see made with baby birds. I'm not gonna make this a list. I'm gonna focus on one because people are so terrible about it. Ready? get to the video. What do you think it is? Did you know that there's several dozen things that you can do in the bird's first year of its life to put these beautiful things into rescues for the rest of their life? We just created a baby bird course, so check out the link <coughs> in the description if you feel like you need help setting your baby bird up for success. But in the meantime, enjoy this baby bird related video. So in my opinion, from being and consulting with people about their birds and what they've done to create bad habits or what have you and have problems in the future. What, you just really want my camera. Can you just focus on anything else, bud? Um, yeah, I lost my focus. Oh, okay, that's right, what the biggest mistake is. I would say the biggest mistake made with baby birds, feeding them from your mouth, just kidding. What are you doing? That's my nose. That's my nose. Are you playing got your nose? <laughs> Jeez. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay, the biggest mistake, seriously, seriously this time, is not working through fears. So baby birds are so cute and cuddly and we wanna keep them safe and now my nose itches from all of that. Uh, and we wanna keep them comfortable and happy. And a lot of the times, as soon as a baby bird shows a simple sign of discomfort or is like, whoa, 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 what's that? And they've never seen it before and getting exposed to something new just freaks them out um, or even just subtly makes them uncomfortable. I see a lot of owners just go, oh no, that scares you, get rid of that, get rid of that, don't do that, that makes him nervous. Um, and the problem with that is that you're not actually teaching the bird like, oh, hey, I'm feeling fearful. How do I work through that? Well, my humans equipped me with this many tools to get over this fear if it is in fact an irrational fear. Now, if it's a rational fear where like that thing could kill you and it poses a threat, then, then heck yeah, man, the bird should be naturally fearful of that. But if it's irrational fear, like you walked in with orange shoes and your bird's like, whoa, 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 get those out of here. You gotta work through stuff like that. And I just see a lot of people realizing that certain things make their birds uncomfortable, especially baby birds, and just taking it out of the equation altogether. And that's no, that's no way for any animal to live. Like they can't just accumulate fears because eventually they're gonna be scared of the entire world. Uh, and that's just not fair. It doesn't make them adaptable or pff, able to work through anything. Do you wanna go play with some toys? Cause this is not working. Play there. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. So, how do you work through those fears? How do you, I guess, figure out which things are irrational versus rational fears? Um, and how do you give your bird the tools to work through that sort of thing without feeling like a terrible person for exposing your bird to something that makes it unhappy or uncomfortable? So let's tackle rational versus irrational fears first. A rational fear is something that is actually threatening. Maybe it's a dog or a predatory animal. That's a legit fear. That's not something that you should teach your bird to be okay with because in a sense that could make it so that your bird dies later on just accepting all predatory animals. Um, but an irrational fear is something like a new piece of furniture, the new chapstick you put on the table, a new toy in the cage. I mean, it can really translate to anything that is simply non-threatening to your bird. Um, and you need to work through these things, these little ailments of discomfort to make a more adaptable and braver bird so that can handle more in the long run. Because keep in mind, 
your bird's most likely gonna outlive you. And if that's the case, it needs to be more adaptive to the next family so that it's more likely to be adopted. Uh, we don't want a bird that's deemed unadoptable that nobody wants because um, it's, it's scared of its own shadow. So, how do you work through fears? My number one tip would be teaching your baby bird to target train. Target training is just so universal. It has so many different benefits to it that are just amazing. It can really help animals overcome fear. It can help socialize your animal. It can help anybody work with your animal in a hands-off way where you're not forcing your bird to do anything. It's actually choosing to do it. Um, it's a really good form of mental misdirection. Just all the things. So when a bird is fearful of something, my go-to is target training because it actually allows the animal to choose to get closer to the object that it's scared of versus you bringing the object to it and saying, how uncomfortable are you <laughs> with this proximity changing? Um, I would much rather the animal choose its proximity and say, I will come to this point, or I will come past this, or I'll step over it. I've had birds get over the fear of things by stepping over it, walking on it, um, just all the things with target training. So target training is my number one go-to. If for whatever reason you can't target train, I would definitely work on just the acceptance of looking at these things. Sometimes the mere eye contact a bird makes with something scary can deem it uh, a click and a treat right then and there. So formally training your bird to be braver is going to be really, really successful. So those would be my main tips, but allowing your bird to be scared of everything and saying, oh, this makes him nervous or uncomfortable. So we're just going to get that out of its life is not a long-term solution. It actually makes for a very problematic animal. And this is especially true for African greys. These birds are a naturally phobic species. So it's something that you have to work with. You have to work with African greys with um, from early, early on. Whereas macaws and other species, they might be a little bit more naturally curious, a little bit more naturally accepting of things, um, but it's still something that I see, especially macaw owners, who just wanna make their baby really comfortable, not work through these hardships and these things and these uncomfortable situations. <clears throat> I actually, <laughs> oh my gosh, I actually had a conversation the other day uh, with a client who, do you wanna be on this again? What are you doing? You're all over the place. Oh, a feather! <laughs> Where'd it go? Oh, oh, I can't catch it. Okay, you wanna see? <laughs> um, I was on the phone with a client the other day on a consultation actually, and she was talking about how <clears throat> how upset she was that she felt like her bird was upset. And she was kind of projecting how she would feel in that situation, which she had kind of deemed as abandonment. And she just kind of threw all of her human emotion on the animal and was just like, this is how the animal feels. The animal is so upset. The animal is doing this. The animal is making this kind of call or noise. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> um, and the interesting thing was, is I was able to kind of kibosh that because I was like, here's the reason I didn't treat it that way. I didn't view it as abandonment because the behavior was present, oh my gosh, whether somebody was with the bird or not. So to me, it didn't tie itself to abandonment. And I just kind of felt like a lot of people, especially on my day one videos with birds, will just get really passionate because they are... 100% convinced about their perception and interpretation of what they think the animal is feeling. And usually it's very projected emotion based on what the human is feeling. And then it gets even more passionate because they're very, very convinced by it. So I urge you guys to be careful about assigning human emotion to animals because that's really what gets you in trouble and gets you kind of acting reactively versus dissecting and analyzing the behavior for what it is. Um, we have to remember that these animals, they're not dogs and cats. They're not domesticated in our home. They have a lot of natural instincts that go against being able to live well in captivity, like destroying everything, being incredibly destructive and messy, uh, being insanely loud, um, just all the things. And so we need to remember that they are, they are nature's creation and to think about nature before we start just putting on our human emotions on these guys. And I think that's what lead people wrongly in the very beginning with baby birds is that you're wanting to kind of put this like protective barrier and bubble around the baby bird and not expose it to anything horrible. And 
that actually works against creating a very adaptive and brave bird if it's never exposed to anything that can help it grow and face its fears. This, <laughs> this, having you back there, I don't know that it works. <laughs> You're so funny. You are, just the cutest. Oh my gosh, you are. <laughs> you better. I don't know why you have to keep turning like this and putting your tail here. Okay, anyways, I hope you guys got the point of this video. <laughs> I really, really hope. Um, definitely more videos of baby boats come. If you haven't yet, check out our baby bird course on raising baby birds right. It has everything you need to know and you get to see the process of which we raised baby Bo along with baby Halo and uh, really enjoy it and get to see the journey from day one all the way on with no cuts or fancy edits. Um, you just get to see it in its raw form and see how we went up, up about approaching everything, which was kind of cool because it was different for each baby bird, as you probably well know if you have a baby bird.